Okay, we're ready when you are, and then we'll work, we'll work on the uh, focus problem. All right. Um, I don't have the other mic. Is there another mic here? You can just here. You can talk I'm into that. The podium, okay. You're going to give me a countdown? We're all set. Okay. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first security seminar of the spring semester. We're very happy to have all of you here, uh, and uh, those of you who are watching either the recorded version or, or otherwise. Uh, today's speaker is Dr. Simpson Garfinkel, uh, someone I have known and worked with for over 15 years, and it gives me great pleasure to, to say it's Dr. Garfinkel, uh, because uh, pursuing that degree has been a, a goal of his for some time, and, and uh, he's done some really remarkable work over the years in a number of areas, uh, including uh, security policy, uh, privacy policy, technology issues of many different kinds, and uh, most recently he's been doing work in two areas related to cyber forensics and to security and usability. And today he's going to talk primarily about the cyber forensics. And so without further ado, let me introduce Dr. Simpson Garfinkel. Thank you. <coughs> so I have too many slides, so we'll have to go through them quickly. <coughs> Here um, on the here is a picture of 200 hard drives. And the question you might want to ask is, which in the, of those have my email address, uh, Simsong at, at Media? Now, that's a, that's a hard question. So one way that you might solve that is you might take each of those drives onto a computer and image it manually and go through it with tools. And um, that's the way most people would do it today. I'm going to be talking about new tools and techniques that might, you might use to do that kind of analysis and additional analyses, analyses that you can do with these kinds of tools, which are designed to work with large numbers of disk drives rather than one or two disk drives. Can I close this door? Or, OK. There we go. So uh, this, the, first, I'm going to talk about the drives project. And then I'm going to talk about the traceback study. And finally, I'm going to be talking about cross-drive forensics. Now, this is a computer here that I purchased at a used computer store in 1998. And um, I was doing a project. I needed 10 computers, and they sold them to me for $10 each. And it turned out that it was the file server for a law firm and that it still had client confidential documents on it. And the other computers also had really interesting information. One had mental health records. One had home finances. One had a draft of a novel. And the real question that I wanted to know was, was this a chance occurrence or something that happened frequently? Uh, I had a special relationship with the owner of the, of the store. Now, hard drives have this special problem for computer security. They don't forget data when the power is turned off. And they contain data that's not immediately visible. You can look at the hard drive. It's very hard to audit it. And hard drives are remarkably stable. They're probably the most stable thing we have in computing. You can take a 15 or 20-year-old hard drive, plug it into a modern computer, and read the files. Because the file systems are now the Mac and Linux and PC all support the old FAT file systems. And the ATA interface has been remarkably uh, stable over time. And the power connectors are still the same. And this is very different than tape drives where even a five-year-old tape cannot be read in a modern tape drive. And there are a huge number of hard drives out there. So this graph, um, which is pretty much current data, you can see that in um, this year, there'll be something like 375 million hard drives shipped. And there'll be a little more than 200 million hard drives retired. And each one of those retired hard drives is a security problem, potentially. Now, when, if you physically destroy the hard drive, there's no problem. So this hard drive was punched with a machine that punches out the spindle. That's not good enough for classified data. This hard drive here was put in a blast furnace and melted and turned into ingots. That is good enough for classified data. <laughs> it turns out that most of these retired hard drives are not physically destroyed. Uh, there's actually a lot of them that are sold on eBay. There's a large secondary market. Some of them are reused within an organization. They're given to charities. Uh, I found one charity that was collecting hard drives, actually whole computer systems from businesses in the, in the Boston area and sending them to India because uh, they need computers in India. And um, I asked the people, well, how do you assure that the, the companies that give you these computers, that their data won't be compromised? And they say, oh, don't worry. We, we clean them off first. We install Linux on these computers. 
And I said, so you're not actually sanitizing them. You're simply giving the people who get them all the tools necessary to recover the confidential data that, that they might still have. Now, there have been roughly about a dozen cases of people who've bought used hard drives or used computers and have found very important records on them. And one of them, John Markoff, wrote in 1997 in the New York Times about this woman in Nevada. She bought a used PC and it had 2,000 pharmacy records on it, uh, prescription drugs, people in her community. And survey after survey says that Americans think that medical records are the most sensitive information that they have. And here a pharmacy had sold basically a list of everybody who was depressed in the woman's hometown. None of those studies were really scientifically rigorous. So I decided to try to do something bigger. And so starting in 1998, I started buying used hard drives. And I'm up to about 1,000 of them right now. And what I do with these hard drives, uh, they show up by, by UPS or, or USPS. And um, sometimes I buy them at, at used stores. And I have this machine where I, I image them. I copy the data that's on the hard drives onto a server. And this machine, you can see, can do four at a time. So I've been developing software that does this in a sort of production mode fashion. And then I, I compress the images and I store them. That right there is 900 gigabytes of storage, which is astounding if you think about it. I have um, basically six or 700 hard drive images stored on these three hard drives here. Now, I'm not looking at these exotic recovery techniques for data that's been written over once and you can recover the stuff that's there. You know, we, we hear about the secret technology and you have to rewrite multiple, multiple times. For, for the purposes of my research, if somebody just writes zeros over the disk, I can't get back the data. I'm just asking the disks to give me their data. And um, as an example, I'll show you disk number 70. So I purchased this disk for $5 from eBay from a Massachusetts retail store. And it had 541 megabytes of data. So it has a million sectors because sectors are always 512 bytes long. And if you mount the disk, you see these three files, io.sys, msdos.sys, and command.com. Um, but if you look at the sectors, it's got a million sectors. And it's 989,000 of those sectors contain user data, contain data of some kind. So what happened to this hard drive? Does anybody know? Yeah. Not quite. Yeah. Right. They ran the DOS format command. Now, the DOS format command makes a promise. And that promise is, warning, all data on non-removable drive C will be lost. Proceed with format. Yes, no. And it lies. <laughs> Now, you might want to do a class action lawsuit against Microsoft. And in fact, the, the, uh, the FDIS command is another technique that people use to sanitize their hard drives. Uh, I bought some hard drives at a, at a used store and I and asked them how they clear them out. They said, oh, we do better than format. We delete the partition with FDISC, right? So the format command on, that, uh, on this 10 gigabyte drive with 20 million sectors, the format command overwrites 21,000 sectors or 0.1%. The FDIS command overwrites 2,000 sectors. All it's doing is rewriting the partition table. That's one sector. But it actually does some checks other, else, other places on the drive to make sure that it's actually working. These commands will complicate data recovery if you're trying to recover whole files, if the files were fragmented. But they will not erase the user data. Now, I took that drive number 70. I created a file called 70.img, an image of drive 70. I did that with the dd command. And then I ran the strings command on it. And strings looks for printable strings. And the first thing we see here is insert diskette for drive and press any key when ready. So that's a bootstrap loader. And then we see your program caused the divide by a zero overflow error. That's an interrupt service routine for the divide by zero. And then we see this thing here, oem string equals ncr14. Anybody know what that is? Graphics mode, 640 by 7 by 480. This is part of the Windows registry. So it has, 